Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to my channel. Um, update video three. Uh, it's been a little bit since I made a video on the uh, progress of the suit, and goddamn, has a lot changed. Um, I've made a lot of progress, um, messed up some things, fixed some things, um, completed some things that uh, I'm going to be talking about to you today, and we'll be going over a lot, like reprinting a new mask, how far I've come with the suit, little techniques and things that we've you know developed along the way. Um, so let's jump into it. So this is the suit so far. Um, as you can see, uh, I've made a little bit more progress since last time, like I was saying. Um, on update video two, I believe, all I had roughly was the arms done, and they didn't really fit too well. Um, and I had a mat that had the helmet. This is progress, though. This is, uh, it's, it's amazing to me how far I've come and how nice it looks. And if I can get it to look like this, while I'm wearing it, I'll be very happy. So I'm gonna kind of pick this thing apart um, over the re re rest of this video and talk about different aspects, but I wanted to put it all together. And I also don't want to talk about how long it took to get it into this pose. Um, it's great for wearing. It doesn't really go together by itself. So uh, there's a lot of foam and there's some tape holding it together currently, but this is where I'm at. Um, a lot of people keep telling me it looks like um, the uh, Batman armor from uh, uh, Batman vs Superman, or uh, I've gotten a lot of different. You know, it, it looks like Batman, and I can see that. Um, it, it's clearly all black, and uh, it's a little more form-fitting than it's typically, say, a normal Iron Man suit that's all bulky. So I'm going to take you kind of across this thing while it's together, and uh, talk about the different little bits and pieces of it, what I've done, what's cut apart, and then I'll start taking it apart um, and showing you the insides and stuff. So right off the bat. Um, the arms, uh, I had to reprint all of them, um, the bicep and the tricep. Um, I'll show you why later on how much nicer they fit and how much easier they are to get on and off and more range of uh, mobility that I have. Um, I was able to get the shoulders printed. I'm, I'm still going to have to move these. I, right now I have them secure with buckles right under here and they kind of sit over. Uh, however, they don't hang down far enough. Hey, we have a little, uh, little guest appearance here. Hi hey, Maya, how are you? Hi. Surprise, guys, this is going to be the entire video, just me petting my little Shiba dog, and uh, she just hijacked this video, so, um, sorry. So anyway, before I was so rudely interrupted, um, the shoulders, uh, they hang down a little, they're, well, they don't hang down enough. Um, I kind of need to get this section to sit more here. Uh, this way it hangs over the bicep a little more, because there's a lot of gap filler spot right there that... Uh, you can see like my chest and like shoulder and I want to cover that up. I'm going to, I got to move these down and move them up a little more forward. Um, I have a buckle on the outside, this, uh, the top of the neck right here, the shoulder kind of comes down to about here. So I have a lot more room to play with, which is fine. Um, so the shoulder was printed all in one piece. Luckily I have a printer big enough to do this, this whole plate, the bicep was one piece, the forearm was one piece. Um, the ch whole chest area, this is all one piece, or now it is one piece. So this was printed in four sections. It was sliced in half this way. And then each side, I cut a little more diagonal. You can still actually see the fuse line right here. I, I'm not done uh, filling that in. Um, I was able to fuse them pretty, well, pretty well together with uh, um, some plastic welding and PLA welding. Uh, this spot right here in the front of the chest is, is I mean, almost perfectly smooth. Um, I did the same down the abs, uh, right here, there's a little bit still showing. So this was all four pieces, um, the upper ab area. So I printed this whole ab section too big and I had to trim off a lot of the area down here. So I lost a little bit of detail back here, but I just, I don't have it in me to reprint it. And it actually fit, makes it fit a little bit nicer being a little bit too big, but I was able to warp it and bend it to fit around me better. Um, so this was kind of, this was one piece. This was one piece, and then these little ab plates were printed uh, separately, and then it all kind of came together. There's buckles underneath here, holding this together from drooping down, and then this section kind of wraps around my waist. Same with this bottom section, there's straps down here that buckle it around my waist to my back, and this was printed in two pieces and fused, and then this all kind of sits together. Uh, the little crotch plate area, um, a little uncomfortable in the, uh, in, in the giblets, but uh, we're working on that. This was printed in two pieces and then it was fused right here. You can kind of see the little fusion line here. Um, I'll show you guys how I did that and kind of got it smooth in the whole process of that because it's it's a, a pretty easy to do once you figure it out. Um, the thighs, I just got done printing these. I'm still, actually it's a little uh, pro process right here. Um, I sanded this top part. I haven't sanded the bottom part 
and I'm still uh, plastic welding these and filling them out all out. Um, actually right here, this, this spot's all pretty much done. It's pretty smooth. It just needs a palm sander to kind of take it down a little bit more. This spot I haven't gotten to yet. Um, right now, the printers that are running, they're actually printing the shins. So for this whole suit, realistically, I have about seven to eight prints left. That's including the shoes, the shins, and the rest of the new helmet, which I'll talk about later. Um, as for the gloves, so I want to talk about those. Uh, this model that I'm making is going to be the Mark 85 suit from the final scene, basically, without the battle damage. Um, I'm going to kind of treat this as if Stark had the stones the whole time, and he went into the battle with the suit fully capable. Um, it wasn't a, it wasn't after Thanos already kicked his teeth in. So, I was able to get my hands on the, uh, the final, it's not the Stark Tech gauntlet, it's not the Infinity gauntlet, it's just the gauntlet that his suit made when he stole the stones from Thanos. Spoiler alert, if you don't know already, you're living in the Stone Age, I guess. So, this forearm looks pretty fundamentally different than this forearm, and I'll, I'll show you the size comparison and really what they look like um, a little bit later. But, so they are different, and then you have the hand toppers, so this one will take the stones, which I'm in the process of uh, resin casting right now. Um, and it just sits over the glove. It makes it a lot easier to get on not having the, the back plate on the glove. And then this one's just the normal, you know, left hand glove. So I'm gonna take this thing apart and we'll start talking about different little aspects of it and uh, little tricks and tips I can probably offer you in your own build. So first off, let's talk about the arms. Um, last video, last update video, uh, I would have been totally scared to actually take these on and put these off on camera because they were really tight and it took a lot of effort and it just was uncomfortable. Um, so I reprinted them. Uh, the last ones were made at 80%. These are at 90 and the size difference is actually pretty incredible. Right now there's nothing really holding them together except just the friction on like my arms. Um, now that the forearm is the right size, it does kind of help hold up. The glove helps hold everything up. And then if I kind of just let everything kind of sit there and hang, it all just kind of locks together. Uh, I still got to kind of touch up the spot, figure out a way that the elbow is going to move and, um, you know, uh, rotate around. But now, since everything's kind of completed, I can take the glove off pretty easily. The forearm slides right off, and so does the bicep. So this is just way more comfortable than it was last time. Uh, I'm gonna to try to develop a little bit of a hinge system so they kind of help support each other. So that's what the that's what the uh, arms reprinted. So these are the two forearms I was talking about: um, the left forearm and the right forearm. And if you can kind of see how much bigger. The, uh, the upper part of the right forearm is, this is the one for the gems and the, the, uh, the stones after his arm starts to kind of transform. So it has a little bit more beef to it, even though they're both printed the same size. My arm went perfectly through this one. It, didn't, it still didn't fit through this one. This, uh, the hole where your wrist goes through, I had to flare it out more. With a heat gun, you can kind of warp the PLA. So now my wrist, it still takes a little bit of effort to push it through, but it's not you know, life-threateningly tight. So that sits there. This still comes up a little bit farther and then everything still fits perfectly. So that worked out. This is part of the whole um, Infinity Gauntlet set or the Stark Tech Gauntlet set that goes with this glove. Everything, everything kind of sits there and lines up nice. Um, so once the paint's on it, it'll, it'll all look much better. So now let's talk about the back section. This kind of is the main focus of the whole suit and um, actually supporting everything. Uh, this actually goes, wears like a backpack. I was able to add some straps that just sit right around my shoulder and they clip around my waist to kind of tuck everything in and then the lower back part just kind of hangs there just to give me a little bit of, um, of range of motion. So this clips onto my back. I was able to form fit it with a heat gun a little bit better so it wrapped around and gave me some um, shoulder movement. The other problem I was having though with it was where it actually meets up with the, uh, the, the front part of the chest. The front part of the chest kept falling down uh, so you would, you're able to see this like this seam that would sit there and you'd actually see into this. So what I was able to do is I took some extra raft supports that I had and made like a little um, a little spring hinge that actually as the part sits on top of it and buckles in, there's just two little uh, elastic buckles there. It actually helps kind of uh, spring and hold it up, which has been working great. Um, I'm gonna try to bend this and fine tune it a little bit more so it just sits perfectly flat and flush. But this will go on and then this all sits in front of it. Uh, that, this is where the buckles go that I was showing you before. This clips in and then it all just kind of hangs over the front of my body like that. Um, like I just said before, there's a lot of, there's little waist straps that kind of uh, go around me to kind of tuck everything and snug everything up. And everything just sits in a, uh, a more of a, a layer kind of, layered kind of design where this covers the abs right here and then the top abs cover the lower abs. And then this lower abs section covers the top of like that kind of crotch plate. 
as I kind of said before, this whole uh, the whole ab area um, it was a little bit too big. I printed it at 115 percent because my measurements were a little screwy. Lesson learned. Now we're printing at 100 percent of the, the the original scale of the model. Um, so I had to trim a lot of this down, but it fits much more comfortable. Uh, it, it gave me a lot more room to move my arm and shoulders. This used to come up way too far. It just, it hurt. I couldn't put my, my arms are kind of stuck up like this. So after kind of wallowing that all out and everything kind of just lines up a little bit better. And that's what I was saying before, where it kind of locks into place and then everything lines up right there. And then these little buckles right here hold the shoulders up and they just sit so they have full uh, range of motion. Uh, they work great. I think I need to move them down a little bit. Like I said, I need to extend that. Or maybe I'll just move this buckle kind of just below it. Um, but this is working for me so far. So the chest piece. So I cut this out and then reprinted it. So what I'm doing here for the chest plate, which now fits perfectly in there, you, um, I, you could I could have sliced this out before I had actually printed it. I didn't think about it till after. So I used a soldering iron and kind of just cut this all out. So that just sits in there now. And now what's gonna happen is I'm in the process of resin casting this um, with a silicone mold. And uh, it's just gonna be a clear plate. I'm gonna, throw some, I'm gonna make it kind of frosted and put some LEDs behind it. So this will all just kind of glow and light up just how it's supposed to. I'm doing the same thing with the stones and the arc reactors in the hand. So um, I think I might uh, talk about the resin casting a little bit more in another video because this one's already gonna be long as hell anyway. And just the whole process of that and where I'm at. So I think I'm gonna do another video on that. The crotch plate and the uh, little butt region cover uh, was pretty simple. It, it really, it wears almost like underwear. Um, I just put two buckles and straps. They lock around like this and they just sit around my waist and it, it's, it's very simple. Um, it's just a matter of how high or low you put them on and how low the, the whole torso comes down, how high the thighs come up to kind of get rid of those gaps. Um, and then the back, you know, chest plate just kind of hangs in this little area. And it, it was pretty simple to do. Um, these are both printed in just two pieces each and then fused together. Uh, depending on your size or waist size or hips, uh, whatever you have going on, um, you, can use the, you can use an oven or a heat gun to kind of shape and warp these. I had to do that to kind of flex this out a little bit. I guess the dude who modeled for this entire build was a, like even skinnier than I was, but taller. So uh, if you have any type of mass or weird size to you, um, it, you're gonna have to adjust some things. The most recent addition to this was the thighs. Uh, I just got done printing these two or three days ago, got them fused together. These things are gigantic. Um, each one of these took almost a whole spool of filament. Uh, it, they're big and they're light. They're still, you know, they don't have a lot of weight to them, but they were just very large prints. Uh, sliced it clean in half, flipped them, and that was it. Um, so I'm still in the process of cleaning these up, uh, bonding them. Um, they don't fit perfectly. Uh, <laughs> working on that, um, they don't come up high enough. The inner kind of crotch area right here, like the inner thigh, um, I need to trim this down a little bit just because uh, if you have any type of leg muscle, um, this was a little bit uncomfortable up here, and especially with the two of them pinching. Um, if you're a guy, that isn't, that doesn't feel good. So I'm gonna trim a little bit of uh, area around there to give me some more motion. And then it's kind of tilted. So in here, it kind of pushes on, um, it kind of pushes on the inside of my knees. Like it's wanting to kind of bend my knee. So once I get this trim, I'm gonna throw the whole thing in the oven, slide it up my leg, and it'll kind of let me warp it to my body shape and everything. So that'll help a lot. And then the higher I can get this up, the better this can kind of fit into like the, the crotch plate area and it'll uh it'll kind of help hide everything depending on how this kind of sits in there and it'll help everything look a little bit better ideally if i can get it up like that high it'll be perfect so i know that was a lot um i'm sorry i really actually wanted this whole update to be one video but i'm going to split it into two i'll do an update for video because I, I do still want to talk about um how i have the face plate the the mask lighting up it's even motorized now opens and closes you know with the press of a button uh, i want to talk about the resin casting so I'll talk about more of that with the electronics and stuff in the next video, but that's where I'm at with printing wise. Um, there's just a couple prints left really. It's getting the thighs or the shins done, working on the shoes. I had to cut them up a little bit. And um, I'm also printing a, a new helmet that fits this suit a little bit better because this one was, I think I mentioned it in the first video. Um, this one was a little bit too big. Uh, looks great. This has just been more of a test helmet, but I'll, I'll talk about all that in the next video. So uh, if you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, want to know, again, want to know how I did this, why I didn't do that, um, please drop a comment, ask. Uh, somebody 
just last night um, introduced me to a very good switching system. I was about to do over engineer the heck out of this thing um, and somebody showed me something I didn't even know about and now I ordered it and it's on the way. So it's, uh, it's gonna make life a lot easier. Um, thanks for watching and have a good day.